All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 10. And in this lesson, students are gonna be using the area model to um, kind of like prove that we can use the division statements to show that two fractions are equivalent. And really what's different about this lesson is the previous lessons we were using only unit fractions. Now we're gonna be um, simplifying uh, other fractions. It's really going to start eventually looking like we are going to be using the standard algorithm. We're still using that area model just to prove to students that everything's working, um, but we're really walking towards that standard algorithm. So it says compose the shaded fraction into larger fractional units and then we're going to express the equivalents with division. And so what we're going to look at is first thing we see is we have we're beginning with four tenths. And then the idea is we're supposed to mush things together. And we're going to go right here, right here, 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 and here. So we're going to group them together by twos. And so instead of having tenths, we now have fifths. And instead of having four tenths, we now have two fifths. So we know that four tenths is equivalent to two fifths. And we can use the division statement to, sh to show that these two guys are equivalent because we can say that 10 divided by two is five, four divided by two is two. And because we're using the same numbers in the numerator and the denominator, and because, of course, 4 divided by 2 is 2 and 10 divided by 2 is 5, that tells us that 4 tenths is equivalent to 2 fifths. Now, one of the things that I, I've been thinking about here is you got this fraction, this shape, right? And so far, we've been kind of following this sort of rule for how we compose the pieces together to make larger fractional units. And and I know, parents and teachers, you guys are going to have some sort of out-of-the-box thinker that says, well, why do we have to group them like that? What if we want to group them like this? One, two, um, let's do this right here, and let's do this one like this, and let's do this. So we're going to get, you know, some out-of-the-box thinker. Do we all have, do we always have to group them in the same way like this? Of course, the answer is no, but let's talk about why real briefly. Well, we're going to start out with that original four-tenths, and then the idea is, well, what do we have now? Well, we have five groups, and they're all the equal-sized groups. They're all the same size. They're just not oriented in the same way. So our denominator, we still have five as our denominator because we still have five groups total. And out of the five groups total, two of those groups are completely shaded in. So our numerator is two. And then we can still use our division to show that it works. Oh, look at that. Four divided by two is two. Ten divided by two is five. Therefore, four tenths is equivalent to two fifths. So I just thought I'd point that out, uh, because parents and teachers, you may have some sort of out-of-the-box thinker student who's saying, well, why do they always have to be oriented in the same way? And the answer is, they don't have to be oriented the same way. They can be cockeyed as long as each of the groups, even though they're oriented in different directions, as long as each of the groups are the same size, we're okay. Moving along in that same idea, so we're going to express the equivalent fractions using a division statement, right? So we're going to, so let's just do B here. So we're going to start with the fact that we have, let's see, what is that? 12 sixteenths. Now, how do I know 12 sixteenths? Well, because there's 16 pieces total and 12 of the 16 are shaded in, all right? So we know that we're going to start off with 12 sixteenths and I can group, and I can put these four together, I could put these four together, these four together, and these four together, and now instead of having 12 sixteenths, I now have 3 fourths, and we know that 12 sixteenths is equal to 3 fourths because we can simply say, hey, look at that, 
12 divided by 4 is 3. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Therefore, 12 sixteenths is equal to 3 fourths. And I want to kind of say again, what if you have that out-of-the-box thinker who says, well, why do they always have to be oriented in the same way? And they don't. Uh, we can say, we could start off with 12 sixteenths, and we could say, well, if you want to group them, you can group them in a different way. Um, you could group them in groups of four like this. You could say, the, let's put these four together right here. Let's put these four together right here. Let's put these four together as a tower, and then these four together right here. So again, we have four groups, all of equal size, and we see that three of those groups are shaded in. And then we have the same kind of division going on that 12 divided by 4 is 3, 16 divided by 4 is 4. Now there is another alternative. Instead of grouping them uh, into groups of 4, we could have put them in groups of 2, in which case our fraction would have been 6 eighths. And that would have been fine. That uh, would not have been wrong at this stage of the game. So here we're going to draw an area model to show each number sentence. And let's do, um, let's do B. So we've got 6 eighteenths. So that means we need to cut, we need to draw a box and cut it up into 18 equal sized pieces. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my multiplication fact and I know that 3 times 6 is 18. So there's my 18. And it says we're supposed to shade in 6 of those 18. So I'm going to shade in 6. And boy, there's a lot of ways we could do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's my 6 of my 18 that I just shaded in. So there's 6 eighteenths. And then it says, ultimately... We're going to put them in groups of three because that's what that divide by three is. Because now we want, we want to end up with six groups because we want to end up right here. We want to take these 18 pieces, these fractional units, 18 little fractional units, and we want to end up with six groups. And so instead of eight groups, we want six groups. And I can see that, oh... Six groups, pretty straightforward. I could go one group here, 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 one group here. But that's no good because I don't have any groups that are completely shaded in. So I want to think of a different way that I can create six groups. And so I am going to show you a sneaky way. There's one group, there's one group, there's a group, there's a group, there's a group, and there's a group. So now do you see our six groups? We have one group here, one group here, one group here, 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 and here. So we now have six groups, because it says so, and we even see that two of our groups are completely shaded in. So there's our 6 eighteenths is equal to 2 sixths. And then, of course, we can use division to show that, that we knew that was going to work all along. Because we can see that, well, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 18 divided by 3 is 6. Therefore, 6 eighteenths is equivalent to 2 thirds. Now, parents and teachers don't have a fit. Because I know you guys are going to go old school and say, but that can be reduced again. At this point, we're not worried about that. At this point, we're just trying to show our students that a fraction using division can be renamed using um, larger fractional units. I know these are smaller numbers, but they're larger pieces. And um, that a model, a geometry model, geometric model will match our problem. So don't worry about the fact that this is not reduced completely, right? That's old school, so don't worry about it. And our last slide, 
for this video. It says to use division to rename each fraction given below. Draw a model if that will help you. Um, and then see if you can use that largest common factor. So we're going to start with that 6 twelfths. And we're going to say, well, what can 6 twelfths, what can both 6 and 12 be divided by? And we want to think about the largest factor. Well, we know that 6 can be divided by 2, so can 12. We know that 6 can, divided by, can be divided by 3, and so can 12. But the largest common factor is 6. Because 6 can be divided by 6, that gives us 1. And 12 divided by 6 is 2. So that tells us that 6 twelfths is equivalent to 1 half. Now that's using the largest common factor. At this point, teachers, don't freak out if your students were to do something along the lines of um, dividing both the numerator and the denominator in this case, let's say by 3, if they were to do that, and get 2 fourths, because 6 divided by 3 is 2, 12 divided by 3 is 4. At this point, that is perfectly fine for students to say, well, 6 twelfths is equivalent to 2 fourths. Um, some of your students are going to have this up here. Some of your students are going to have this down here. And actually, what they're going to find out is, hmm, let's see, 6 twelfths is equal to a half. 6 twelfths is also equal to 2 fourths. That tells us that 2 fourths is also equal to 1 half, because they're both equal to 6 twelfths. All right? Just make connections. It's perfectly fine if students don't end up using the largest common factor at this point. And that wraps up. Fourth grade, Module 5, Lesson 10, where, yes, we're still using the area model, but really we're moving to the standard algorithm of division to show that, oh, let's say, 8 tenths is equivalent to 4 fifths because both 8 and 10 can be divided by 2, giving us 4 fifths.